Hello, everyone, and welcome to Teaching in Room 9. The reason shapes are everywhere we look. But we have a job. Now, go ahead and touch your throat right here and see how they feel. And say to ourselves, to be positive. Lemurs are found on the island of Madagascar. For one, and the numbers get bigger as we go across to the right. Reset, that means taking a deep breath. It may mean counting to 10. Today, we're going to start with a freestyle throat. So I'm going to put my up. All righty, are you ready to learn? Let's go! Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Teaching in Room 9, the region's largest classroom. In our new classroom, we can go anywhere and be anything. In this ever-changing space, we will engage and learn about the community around us. But remember what I always say, it doesn't matter if you're 2 or 102, you will have some Fun, F-U-N, fun. You will have some fun while learning. I work at Adams Elementary in the St. Louis Public Schools, and let's get this day started. I, we're going to get started by giving some shout-outs to some of my friends. My first friend's name is Kyrie. Hey, Kyrie. Let's spell Kyrie, capital K-H-A-I-R-I, K-H-A-I-R-I. Hi, Kyrie. The next name I have today is Kaden. What's up, Kaden? How you doing, buddy? Let's spell Kaden, capital K-A-I-D-E-N. What up, what up, what up, Kaden? My next name is Antonian. Hi, Antonian. What's going on? What's going on, buddy? Let's spell Antonian. Capital A N T O N I N. A N T O N I N. Hey, Antonian. And my last name for today is Layla. Hey, hey, Layla. How are you doing today? Let's spell Layla. Capital L-A-I-L-A. L-A-I-L-A. Hi, Layla. Those are my names, but guess what? It's time to get started. Let's go. This is a test. For the next 60 seconds, this station will conduct a test. This is only a test. When we enter into our school, it's much like being at home. It's important that we put our things away. Step one, hang up your backpack. Step two, take off your coat. Step three, hang up your coat. Step four, walk to your seat. Follow these steps each and every day and you'll be ready to learn and have a great day. Let's review how to put our items away in our cubby. Step one, take out all the items that you need for the day. Step two, hang up your book bag. Step three, hang up your coat. Step four, walk quickly and quietly to your seat. Have a wonderful day and great job following your routine. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Welcome back learners to Teaching in Room 9, our region's largest classroom. My name is Julia, I'm a first grade teacher at the Soulard School, and here for Teaching in Room 9, my lessons focus on letters and sounds. Today we're going to be focusing our learning on listening for and picking out the beginning and ending sounds in words. Let's go ahead and start by reviewing what we already know about letter sounds. Letters spell sounds and come together to make words. Words are made up of letters and sounds. They blend together to make a word. Words have meaning and they then come together to form sentences that we can read and write. Nicely done, friends. 
So now we are going to work on really listening to words and picking out those beginning sounds. We're going to do that by singing a familiar song together. Show me a me too if you've ever heard the song Willoughby Wallaby Woo. Yeah, I'm seeing some friends showing me me too. If you can, try to sing along with me. We're really listening for how in each of these names, we're going to switch out that beginning sound and we're going to make the w sound instead. What letter do you think spells the w sound? That's right, it's a W, very good. Okay, really be listening for those names and how they change when we sing. Willoughby wallaby woo, an elephant sat on you. Willoughby wallaby wee, an elephant sat on me. Willoughby wallaby woolia, an elephant sat on Julia. Willoughby wallaby wabram, an elephant sat on Abram. Willoughby Wallaby Walma, an elephant sat on Alma. Willoughby Wallaby Ways, an elephant sat on Blaze. Willoughby Wallaby Wante, an elephant sat on Dante. Willoughby Wallaby Wemma, an elephant sat on Emma. Willoughby Wallaby Woze, an elephant sat on Jose. Willoughby Wallaby Why, an elephant sat on Kai. Willoughby Wallaby Woo. An elephant sat on you. Willoughby wallaby we. An elephant sat on me. <laughs> nice job, friends. Did you hear how we really switched out those beginning sounds to make the name start with that w sound and make it sound kind of silly? Yeah, good job. Okay, we're also gonna practice really listening for and picking out the end sound in words. So an easy way to do that is we're gonna practice by tapping sounds in our fingers and then we'll figure out what is that very last sound that we hear, okay? So let's try the word cat. Can you say that for me? Cat. Good job. Let's tap the sounds we hear. K, a, t. What's that last sound that we heard? That's right. T, t was the last sound that we heard. Let's try another one. Go ahead and say the word dog. Great job. Let's stretch out the sounds. D, a, g. What was the last sound? Yeah, it was that g sound. Way to go. Let's do another word. Goat. Say it nice and loud. Goat. Stretch it out. G o t. What's that last sound? T. Great job. One more. Say the word bird. Yeah, let's tap out those sounds. B er d. What was that last sound you heard? Yeah, you're right. It was the d sound. Make sure you're giving me the sound and not the letter name. All right, let's go ahead and practice. We're going to practice the beginning sounds. So say this for me nice and loud. Say the word baker. Great job. And what's that first sound you heard? B. Great job. Say the word happy. First sound? <sighs> nice. Say the word candle. And the first sound you hear? K. Great job. Say the word dinner. And the first sound that you hear? D. Great job. One more. Say the word gentle. And the first sound in that word? J. Great job. All right, now we're going to pick out just that ending sound in words. Say the word duck. The very last sound you hear in duck? K. Great job. Say the word rope. What's the last sound that you hear? P. Great job. Say the word huge. And the very last sound? J. Great job. Say the word hen. The very last sound in hen? Mmm. Great job. Say the word froze. And the last sound that you hear? Zzz. Good job. Two more. Say the word neat. The very last sound? T. And say the word less. What's the last sound you hear in that word? Wonderful job, friends. I am so proud of you. We really took words, stretched them out to hear all the letter sounds. We looked at the beginning sounds in words and the very last sound in words as well. Wonderful job, friends. Kiss your brains. I'm so proud of you, and I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>
Yes, wildlife expert, Mr. Bear Hands Baran. And his hands are bare right now. What do you think he's going to bring us? Well, today we have something that everyone will see eventually, a western rat snake. Now, these guys are very prolific in this area. You'll see a lot of these, and they eat birds, bats, and baby birds. Well, that's a good thing they only eat birds, bats, and baby birds. <laughs> well, you know, they're excellent climbers, and I mean really, really good climbers. They can climb a solid brick wall, flat solid wall, with no problem whatsoever. So if, you, if there's a bird nest on the side of the, the house, she can climb right up the wall and get them, get oh. all the baby birds out of there. Aww. They also eat a lot of rodents. So they are, they are a western rat snake, and so rodents are 95% of their diet. They eat tons of meadow voles. Now, a vole is a little creature that you might find in the yard, but they also eat mice out of attics, and that's why we see them in homes all the time. Now, I've heard a rat. i heard people say rat snakes. What is a rat snake? What does rat mean? So... Rat snakes are, they fall in the classification of a colubrid, which is, um, you know, your king snakes, your rat snakes, your corn snakes, your milk snakes, all of those intermediate constrictors, which means that they'll grab their prey with their mouth, and then they'll wrap their bodies around them and constrict to, okay. to dispatch their prey, and then they swallow it whole. So they don't, doesn't mean they have a, it's not a rattlesnake, it's just a no. rat snake. Just Actually, a rat, rat snake. snake. And they eat rats. Mm -hmm. They do eat a lot of rats. That's rodents. good, that's good. Yeah. Um, how about babies? How do they, how, how are their babies born? So these guys do lay eggs. They're like a leathery shelled egg. And they'll, this guy right here could probably, she could probably lay 30 eggs probably. And she'll lay them around the end of June, 1st of July and then they'll all hatch out the end of August, the 1st of September. So, in the St. Louis area and most uh, urban areas, suburban areas, in September, the snake population jumps 10 times, 20 times what okay. the population normally is because all of them hatch at the same time. Okay, so is that when we need owls? Uh, well, you know, owls do. Owls will catch and eat snakes, but you know what eats more snakes than anything? other snakes oh wow yeah so king snakes and a lot of different other snakes that will eat other snakes they make sure that their eggs hatch first so that they'll the young king snakes will prey on the young rat snakes so is it possible that i can hold oh yeah so this this snake is very docile just never squeeze a snake now kids if you see a snake in the wild do not approach it do not touch it because you really don't know if it's venomous or non-venomous. And do snake, snakes make good pets? So some snakes do make very good pets, especially ball pythons, um, reticulated pythons, blood pythons. Um, corn snakes are a type of colubrid, but king snakes and milk snakes all make excellent pets. Very easy to take care of. They don't require a lot of special lighting. And you can buy frozen rodents on the internet and they'll eat frozen rodents. All righty. You look you're, like you're having fun with it. I know. I think I may need to give me a snake. Well, maybe not. <laughs> but thank you for bringing our rat snake in. And we'll see you in a bit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hi, friends. Welcome back to Teaching in Room 9, our region's largest classroom. My name is Julia. I'm a first grade teacher at the Soulard School and here for Teaching Room 9, this is our song time. Songs are a fun way for us to practice counting and numbers. Today our song we're going to be counting by twos, all the way up to 50. See if you can try to sing or count along with me. Counting by twos cures the blues. Two, four, six, eight, we're doing great. 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Then comes 20 in between. 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. Then comes 32. You're so smart, just look at you. 34, 36, 38, 40, 42, 44, 46, 48. Then comes 50. 
Wow, great job, friends. I am so proud of you. You did so good. Kiss your brains. I'll see you next time. Bye. Hi everybody and welcome to room nine. My name is Miss St. Louis and I'm a teacher at Rogers Elementary School in the Melville School District and we are located in South St. Louis County. Today I'm here to teach a movement lesson for children of all ages. So let's get ready to get moving. Let's start today by warming up our body. We're gonna begin by shaking our head yes and no and maybe so. And we can warm up our arms with some chicken wing flaps and some nice big scissors. All right, now that we're warmed up, let's dive on in. Today you can see I'm using a chair. We're gonna do all kinds of exercises that you could do while sitting in a chair. And if you don't have a chair, you can do these sitting on the floor as well. So we're gonna start today by doing some twists. I'm gonna put one hand on the back of my chair reaching and the other on my leg and I'm gonna just pull just a little bit so I can start to feel that bend and count to five. One, two, three, four, five. And let's switch reaching across to the other knee. My other hand goes behind and we're gonna twist. One, two, three, four, five. Now to deepen that twist, I'm gonna bring my elbow all the way to my knee, holding at the back again, reaching across, counting to five. One two, three, four, and five. Sit back up and one to the other side. Reach across, one, two, three, four, five. Come on back up nice and tall. Our next pose is called the cat pose. So for this, I'm gonna put both hands on my knees. I'm gonna bring my chin to my chest and I'm gonna arch my back. If you want, you can even add a meow sound just like a cat meow and relax. Now to go the opposite way, it's called a cobra. We're going to bring our hands behind us and we're going to lift our chin up to the ceiling, pushing our stomach out just like a cobra. And if you want, you could stick your tongue up and make a snake sound like a and come on back. The next one is a butterfly and this one could be a little bit tricky. So there's a few different ways. You can put your feet together out in front of you, and if you can, you can even bring them up onto the chair. I know that my chair's a little small, so I'm gonna keep them right here. I'm gonna hold my feet and count to five. One, two, three, four, five. All right, the next one, we're gonna reach towards those toes. One, two, three, four, five. All right. And to continue with that bend, I want you to bring your legs out forwards and reach for those toes. And if you need to, set them down. One, two, three, four, five. Come on up nice and tall. Now we're gonna end with a challenge. We're gonna start by lifting one leg up and we're gonna hold it up for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Bring it down, let's do the last one. Hold it up, one, two, three, four, five. And the big one, we're gonna hold them both up together for five seconds. Are you ready? Bring them up, one, two, three, four, five, and bring them down. Now chair yoga is an excellent thing to do to practice at home when you've got a little bit of time, but not a lot of movement. You could even do it in the car. Remember, the goal is to do 60 minutes of exercise every single day, and you could even do it sitting down. So get in those 60 minutes, make sure to drink your water, and we'll see you back here next time in room nine. Bye, everyone. One, two. Hi there, Room 9. It's me, Mrs. Williams, the Woodland Creature Teacher. When I'm not here teaching and learning in Room 9 with you, I'm teaching and learning at Windsor Elementary where I teach first grade. So hi and lots of love to my Woodland Creatures and all my Windsor C1 family. And this one goes out to Grandma Lara. Today, we're going to be learning about the days of the week. Hmm, let's stop and think about this. How many days are there in the week? Well, let's check. Sunday. 
Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. There are seven days in a week. And the best way that I know to remember the seven days in a week are the special song. So I'm gonna sing it once and then I want you to sing it with me. There are seven days, there are seven days, there are seven days in a week. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Now it's your turn. I'll sing it a little bit slower so you can stay with me. Here we go. There are seven days, there are seven days, there are seven days in a week. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Great job, guys. Now let's talk a little bit about those days of the week on a calendar. So the whole purpose of a calendar is to help us organize how many days there are in a week and how many days there are in a month. There are lots of days in a month and it depends on which month we're talking about how many days there are. So taking a look at our calendar, we're starting here on Saturday as the first day of the month. Now let's take a look at this row because this shows us the entire week. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. This calendar could help us to organize all types of things. It'll help you know when it is time for um, school to be over for the week, your last day of the week. It'll let you know when it's time for maybe your soccer practice on Sunday the 9th. And it'll help you remember to call and wish your friend a happy birthday on the 12th. So one more time, our seven days of the week, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Which day is your favorite? That's all I've got for you today. I will see you soon. Lots of love and a big smile. Have some quick facts about the rat snake. Yeah, so this guy is a western rat snake and they do eat rodents. 95% of their diet is rats, like their, their name implies. Um, they are egg layers and so usually the end of June, 1st of July, they'll lay a bunch of eggs and then they'll hatch those eggs out in September or so. Um, an interesting thing about most snakes and reptiles is when they get too big for their skin, they'll actually shed all of their skin off in one piece. If you do find a shed, a snake shed, you can always believe that it's 25% longer than the snake actually was. Oh, wow. Yeah. Now, they do have um, a Jacob's organ inside their mouth, and when they flicker their tongue out like that, they're actually gathering scent from around their environment so that they can tell where they're going. Okay, so they're, they're, is he gathering my scent? Yeah, he is. Ooh. He's like, hey, your cologne smells great. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much for those fun facts, Mr. Bearhan. Thank you. See you in a bit. Great day. It's Candace with Chaos, and I want to introduce you to my friend Tia. This is Tia right here. Tia is an amazing little girl. So Tia loves to dance, and she loves to roller skate, and she loves to do people's hair. But also, Tia worries a lot. She worries about almost everything. She drives across the bridge with her family and she worries, what's gonna happen if we drive across this bridge? Or when she's in school, she's like, what's gonna happen while I'm in school? And so, Tia has to really work on being patient with herself. And she works on other people being patient with her as well. Because sometimes she worries about making friends and keeping friends because she thinks about what other people are gonna think about her. And sometimes Tia gets into arguments with people because she gets a little irritated when she can't control what's happening around her. And so when we talk about being patient, we're making sure that she learns how to pause and think, inhale, exhale, now talk or now tap out. Can you say patient? So. I want you, just like Tia, to think about being patient whenever there's a time in your life where you have a whole lot going on. I want you to pause and think. Inhale, exhale, 
Now talk if you can, but tap out if you can't talk without being rude or being mean to somebody or being rude with yourself because nobody wants to be rude to themselves or anybody else. That's just not fair. So I want you to try that out. Let a trusted adult know how it works out and have an amazing day. I'll see you soon. Air hugs and cyber kisses. All right, everybody, I see that we're back. But now it is time for us to get out of room nine. But before we get out of room nine, we have to spell our favorite word. And what is that word? Nine. Let's spell nine. N-I-N-E. Thank you for being in room nine. Bye-bye. Teaching in Room 9 is supported in part by Know who to reach out to when you need help. There is hope. Call or text 988.